thought I'd revert to a more traditional intro for this episode, just to say, over the last last half a dozen episodes, I've been trying a commentary highlights package bit at the beginning of the episode. Let me know down in the comments which you prefer. Would you prefer to continue seeing those, or do you prefer to see this kind of intro? Your feedback will be really valuable, and is likely to dictate what I continue with going forward. Hey guys, and welcome to episode 37 of One Team, One Dream, Into the Woods. My name is James, and on today's episode, we have back-to-back -back home games in the league. Firstly, 7th will face 8th as we welcome Grimsby to Meadow Park. And then we're going to skip over the Forest Green away game because we're going to go straight into face. Top of the table, South End, in what is probably going to be one of the most difficult fixtures of the season. Now, it's been almost two and a half months in game since uh, since the last episode. I've jumped on a fair bit, but you will notice we are in exactly the same place that we were when we finished the last episode down in eighth position. However, that is only the tip of the iceberg. If I go into League 2 and go into past positions, you will notice that this is the last time that we are on an episode, which was a loss against Scunthorpe and is actually the lowest we had been so far this season. I mentioned about an iceberg. This was more like a mountain. Our run and shoot up the table was absolutely incredible until we started to spectacularly dump, tumble down the other side to the point where we are now back down in eighth position. If we go on to the schedule... This is what it looks like in terms of results. We had a fantastic October after the loss against Scunthorpe. We didn't even concede a single goal. Yes, there was a Papa John's League Trophy thing in there against the West Ham youngsters, but we managed to beat Barrow, Northampton, Port Vale and Bolton, including back-to-back 4-0 -back wins. However, that is where it ended. November, we went off a cliff. We started with a one or draw against Accrington and it went downhill from there. We've had one win. Well, actually, well, we'll say we've had two wins since the start of November, both of which have been in the league trophy, none of which have been in the league. And that has sought us go from first back down to eighth where we are today. You'll notice in there as well, I did try and change things up a little bit. We tried a 4-3-3 for a couple of games. However, in the league tro most recent league trophy game against Yeovil, I reverted back to the 4-3-1-2. Now, the reason why I tried the 4-3-3 was because Fagan has been out of the... He was, he was out in the last episode. He got re-injured um, uh, in amongst these games, so he only recently has come back from injury. As much as when he originally got injured, his return was going to be unquestioned. I was going to bring him straight back into the side. One man has made me question whether Fagan do, does jump straight back into the side and that is the emergence of John Yeats. This guy has been a revelation this season. You will see he's played 10 games, scored 7 goals, had 1 assist and a 7.09 and he has has slotted straight alongside Taylor Crossdale who is still scoring the goals as well. Obviously not so much in recent games, but these guys but he has he was integral along with Taylor Crossdale, in, in terms of how well we played in October. That, along with the poor form, meant I decided to try a different formation to see if we could get three strikers on the field, hopefully to be able to utilise Fagan, Yeats and Taylor Crossdale. In the end, though, it seemed fruitless, so I've reverted back to the 4-3-1-2 for the league trophy, and based on the fact that our last two wins were when we were playing the 4-3-1-2, even if they were in the league trophy, I'm finding it difficult not to just revert back to that formation. So I will definitely be doing that for at least the first of today's two games. But as I mentioned, Taylor Crossdale has also been continuing his incredible run this season, not just as a goal scorer, but as a goal creator as well. Uh, at the 21 games, he scored 16 goals, seven assists, three player of the match awards, and a 7.38 average rating for the season which makes it even more exciting the fact that he has also recently signed a brand new contract until 2027 so he has a four year contract now on a thousand pounds a week but tying this down was going to be the was going to be priority number 1 this summer so the fact we have done it even before Christmas is absolutely brilliant. Along with signing new contracts we, coming up to the end of December means that we are going to be coming into the transfer window 
and we already have one deal signed and sealed ready to be delivered come January 1st but we also have a couple of other free transfers that we are trying to bring in uh, to try and strengthen certain areas of the squad so the player we know is definitely coming in on a loan for the rest of the season is Ryan Alibiosu who is a 21 year old Nigerian right back we have finally managed to upgrade at right back. He has three and a half star current ability, five star potential ability, under 23's player from Arsenal. He has come in to be our starting right back as neither Hosanna or Reddy have really set things alight at right back. And I really feel even if it's a temporary solution, we need to firm up that right back position as it seems to be our Achilles heel in the back four. We have two other possible free transfers coming in. Both are currently deciding on contracts. The first one is Sini Salo who is a 20-year-old Finnish goalkeeper. This guy came in as an 80 scout rating, 3.5 star current ability, 4.5 star potential ability. He would come in, if he comes in as a current star rating, come in as the best goalkeeper at the club. He would come in as a initially a backup option to Huddard, but would definitely be in for a fighting chance of trying to get a starting spot in the squad. So he is currently considering a contract. The only issue I do have... He has played 17 under 21 games, but no international games. I have tried to read through the, the work permit uh, situation. It, it mentions about the different points and such. So so hopefully this guy will come in, but we will see as time goes on. The other one is Dennis Aidenran. I'm going to guess that's how you say his name. He is a 24-year-old English central midfielder. He can also play as a defensive midfielder as well. He's just as good at both positions. He came in with an 89 scout rating, 3.5 star current ability, 5 star potential ability. But at 24, it'd be interested to see how much more of that potential he can reach. If he, ca- if he came in with a 3.5 star current ability, the same as the goalkeeper, he would come in as the best central midfielder we have. As much as we've got some good potential in central midfield, we need to have a slight upgrade in there as we are still relying on a number of very young players so with that out of the way let's get into the first match of today's episode as we face seven place Grimsby this is definitely a playoff battle between the two of us however one thing you will notice is a number of players are very tired and this is because ridiculously our football league trophy game was on Thursday why we had a game on Thursday when we were literally playing on Saturday I have no idea we couldn't change it though I tried to rotate as much as I could for that game which was also more surprising the fact that we won maybe that says more about my usual team selection than anything else so there's a good chance we're going to be making a few changes at halftime depending on how the game is going so for this game we have Huddard in goal a back four of Divine, Kirk, Tricker and Reddy Adebayi, McDonnell and Mundo are the central midfield. Robson in attacking midfield as the advanced playmaker. And then the goal machines of Yeats and Taylor Crosstail up front. Fagan is back from his injury, but he's still uh, still not fully fit yet. So he's come on to make a couple of substitute appearances in the last couple of games. And I think I'll just try and feed him back into the squad as I can. But being able to have three strikers who have had promising records so far this season is definitely a good problem to have. So let's get into the match. Hopefully our tired legs won't cause us too much of a problem. And we try and get our first win in the league since the end of October. It's been a while since since I've been able to do this, but I'm going to point the finger. Pick up where you left off less, le- uh, left off last time out. It was only a league trophy game, but it was still a win. And a win against second place Yeovil. Now they may have had a rotated side, um, but a win against that team who we're probably going to face on the next episode is still going to be a positive in my eyes. And there's a highlight here out wide with Grimsby, but, but Hara manages to collect the ball. And I presume this is going to be a highlight for us as we look to work out from the back. Huddard with a big ball forward, managed to find Yeats, who's got past the defence. He's beaten the offside trap, tries to smash it into the top left-hand corner. Unfortunately, he was well wide of the post. And our first opportunity in the match goes begging. We're just coming up to halftime and we're already starting to see some tired legs come up on the touchline tablet and Grimsby have a highlight here Watson with the ball into the centre to the back post Reddy does enough to try and put the Grimsby player off and it goes out for a goal kick but they have a free kick almost immediately with Williams whipped into the centre looking for Clifton goes to the back post Devine manages to clear it Mundell was first to the ball and now can we counter attack Mundell with loads of space in front of him he's given all the space in the world to go into the penalty area Yeats has got the ball tries to chip it in unfortunately he was pushed too far wide by the Grimsby defender there and wasn't even able 
able to get it on target. Disappointing, especially as he's had two opportunities in that first half and not been able to do anything with either one. Coming in at half time, you have to say we have had the best of the chances. I'm going to try not to be negative. So I, I'm going to pump the fist. We're the better team here. Just keep what you were doing and we'll be fine. I would probably settle for a draw in this game. We do desperately need a win, but a draw is better than a loss against the team just above us. And we have a throw in here with Divine to Yeats. Back to Divine. Whipped in the centre. Looking for Crossdale. Managed to find him. Mixture of the goalkeeper and the post, I think. Yet another opportunity for us. And Grimsby have a highlight this time with Jones. At wine to Tilly. He has clamp, a clamp in on the overlap into the centre. Spyru at the back post. Divine couldn't get to the ball first. And it's the same old story. Time and time again, we have had a few opportunities in this game. But the opposition strike first. And it's that right-hand side yet again that is causing the problem. Reddy didn't, uh, didn't, uh, didn't close him down quickly enough, and it has cost us. And we're going to have to start making some substitutions on the 63rd minute now. We have so much red in play, and so many players not playing well. Let's bring on Alfie Lewis. I think we're going to have to make a triple substitution here. Let's take off Tricker and bring on Tizard, as Tricker doesn't appear to be having a very good game. Taylor Crossdale is also struggling, so I'm going to bring on Fagan, swap the two over. So we have Yeats now as the poacher, and Fagan comes in as the advance forward. Hopefully, in that position, as a better advance forward, we will, he will hopefully be able to create some opportunities because Yeats has had a couple of chances in this game and has taken none of them. Less than 10 minutes left to play. And this looks like it's going to be another loss. Uh, a bit of desperation. Let's push players forward. So we've pushed Lewis, Mundell, McDonnell, Devine and Reddy forward to try and get some more men up the field. However, I don't think it's going to do much more with only extra added time left. I'm not even going to make a shout. Absolutely no point. There is a, is a disappointing, disappointing result. It is the right side of defence that is being questioned yet again. Trekker and Reed, uh, Reddy, neither of them had a good game. We definitely need to upgrade that right back position. I think we'll just put that down to a poor performance overall, even with the few positive ratings. Thrash my arms, far from pleased from the result. But it seems to be falling on deaf ears at the moment. We drop down to ninth place. Swindon now go above us and we are now four points outside the playoffs. If we look at the club vision, I am still on a C rating. However, the current season positions are abysmal. We, fa we failed in both the FA Cup and the League Cup, failing to reach the second round in both cup competitions. Yes, we're doing okay in the League Trophy, but I would happily trade that in for better league performance at the moment because, we're ex because the board are expecting a to, to reach the playoffs minimum this season and are disappointed the fact that we are now four points outside of the playoffs and in, in complete free fall. And I think it is only the club culture and the ongoing targets that are really keeping me in my job at the moment as they're delighted we're signing players to sell for a profit and working within the wage budget. And that is something I'm definitely going to have to look at during the winter transfer window because we do have money at the club. We have £186,000 of transfer budget. We still have uh, almost four and a half grand a week in the wage budget. Obviously, we can transfer that backwards and forwards depending on what we need. But I cannot seem to spend it at the moment. We're not able to find players in the positions that I want and any duplicates of what we already have here. But I think a major upgrade is going to be needed across the, across the Christmas period. And hopefully, hopefully, by spending a little bit of money, we can try and stop the rot and st and push ourselves back up the table again. So transfer number one is in for the rebuild over the winter transfer window. And it is Adeniran who comes in first, a 24-year-old English midfielder who, according to the press and actually some of the news reports that came out, that he apparently had massive potential when he was younger and has not yet reached the heights that he was expected to. And having looked at his history, he actually moved for £2 million from Fulham to Everton. And I'm sure those of you that keep up with Premier League football better than I do probably recognise this guy from being a youngster at Everton. But he went out on loan, played a full season in the Championship at Wickham and then came back to Everton but hasn't actually played there since and is now ended up at our doorstep, hopefully to slot straight into the first team squad. However, for some reason, the board only gave him a C. Well, the misery continues. We lost 2-0 away at Forest Green. 
we had to, I had to make a couple of changes from the last match uh, just because we're going to be playing seven games in two and a half weeks. It's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, and this being a midweek game with the South End game on the uh, on at the weekend, I re- I, we decided to, I decided to play a few uh, of our backup players and we have been absolutely punished for it. But it's yet again another loss. And do you know what, at this point, I might not even have to worry about upgrading the squad throughout the transfer window. If this carries on, I'm probably going to get sacked. I have barely gone on one screen and this has now come up. The board wished to hold a meeting regarding my position at the club. It has now dropped to an E from a C. They must be absolutely miserable, devastated they are now. They are not happy and the rest of this is not keeping keeping my rating up. The fact that they were upset about the 2-2 draw against Accrington, I could probably pick out half a dozen games that were more upsetting than that one. But let's go into this meeting. They said, we are not happy with our current performance and are considering our position at the club. We would like to know why you think the team have performed so badly. Now, my first reaction is to say, hold my hands up and admit we've not been great. But if you grant me one more month in charge, I promise things will look better. I don't like the idea of that. I mean, they might sack me anyway, but... oh. I, do I like myself? I mean, restricting myself to a month. Let's blame injuries. They said it's not been too good, and that's not a valid reason. I'm going to say, I've done, I've done so much for the club in my time here. I deserve another chance. 10 points in the next five games. <sighs> I have to promise that. Right. It looks like we're going to be coming back a lot sooner than I thought. So we've got five games to save my job Southend, Stevenage, Tranmere, Exeter, and Late Orient. Now, Late Orient are 11th, Exeter 16th. Tranmere are 23rd, Stevenage are 9th. If I'm honest, I don't think it really matters who we're facing. The South End game is basically going to be a write-off at this point. I don't see us getting anything against that lot. It's what we do in the rest of the games that is going to be the thing. Right, well, I'm going to have a bit of a think before we get into the South End game and hopefully see if we can try and get our first point in the league in four games. But I'm going to take a shot. It's going to be unlikely. Right, here we are for what could be the first of the last five games of my time at Borehamwood. Hopefully this is the game that turns our season around. However, based on the fact we are facing the top of the table, I'd say that's going to be unlikely. However, in the words of Monty Python, now for something completely different. I've changed the formation yet again. Uh, This is my... Desperate attempt to try and find some form of solution to what is going on. I did look at trying to do a 4-2-4 or a 4-2-3-1. However, I realised very quickly that because we were playing the formations we were this season, all of my wide players are currently out on loan, bar Kevin Kennedy, who is at the club. Apart from that, everyone else is out on loan. So that's gone out the window. So we are still going to be training the 4-2-4. However, for the time being, I'm going to try something completely different. And we're going to try a 4-4-2 diamond in the hope that this injects something into the squad. But with multiple players tired after the amount of games we've been playing recently, it's going to be difficult, I think, to get anything out of any of these guys at the moment. But we have Huddard in goal, a back for Divine Tricker, Kirk and Hosanna. Adeniran in the ball winning midfielder role for his first match on an episode. He did play against Forest Green briefly. This will be the first time you guys have seen him in a match. Uh, Adebayi and Mundell in central midfield. Robson in the attacking midfield role in the hole behind Yeats and Taylor Crossdale. I could have brought Fagan back in. He's now pretty much back up to fitness again. However, as Yeats and Taylor Crossdale have scored a combined 30 goals so far this season, I felt I should continue... Uh, playing Yeats up front but we do have Fagan on the bench we're also going to be doing a direct counter-attack tactical style as well Uh, maybe it was the tiki taka that was either too advanced for us or wasn't giving us the options or the uh, the the style of football that we needed to play so we reverted back to one that we have played previously hopefully this will revitalize the players in this game I'm going to thrash my arms the media be on your back for ages now go out there just do something please one 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 slightly positive silver lining is that is that Robson actually came out uh, in the in the press and, and defended me as the un, under fire manager. What has happened there? While I've been talking, that looked, was that an elbow to the head? Something has happened here. Taylor, it says Taylor Crossdale is injured. He's getting a red card. South End are down to ten men after nine minutes. Ad Adin Adarin. 
add to it, he's going to take a while to get used to his name, has the free kick. Unfortunately, he doesn't do anything with it, and Southend are going to come forward with the ball. But we have been handed a lifeline here with a 10 men South End, and they're going to come forward now and score, and it's going to be sickening. Lucky they didn't. We managed to clear it. Belairs is now out wide with the ball. Whips it back into the centre. Hudard manages to clutch it, which is which take, takes a little bit of the nerves out of it there. Can we counter-attack? Big ball forward, looking for Robson. Couldn't find him. But Robson was the player that came out and defended me in the press as the under-fired manager. So hopefully uh, hopefully that means the players are still behind me. Robson with the ball now to Adebayi. To Mundell, trying to build something forward. Taylor Crosto in the penalty area, takes a shot, smashes it into the top corner. And it has been a little while since we've seen Taylor Crossdale score a goal, but he now makes it 20 for the season. We are only 10 minutes into the into the last into my five games under trial by uh, by Boreham Wood. But Taylor Crossdale starts it off in the best way we could after the sending off of the South End player, making it 1-0 to us. And hopefully we can push on from here. We have a highlight on 15 and a half minutes. Crankshaw with the ball for South End. Coming forward to Coker. Coming into the centre. He's under a little bit of pressure, but we're not really putting a tackle in yet. And he's still running forward. Why is he being allowed to run that much? He's run, run right across the length of the field. But Lucky Devine, who was jockey, manages to win the ball back. Crossdale through to Yeats. Yeats has got a couple of men in front of him. He's still got a lot to do to Crossdale. To Adebayi for range. And Adebayi gets only his third goal of the season. What a goal from Adebayi. He must have been 30 yards out. Taylor Crossdale. To Yeats. Yeats stops, holds the ball up well. Crossdale back to Adebayi, who didn't even give it a second thought. Just smashes it into the top corner to make it Boreham Wood 2, South End 0. I was writing this game off even before it started, expecting our, hopefully, our, um, our resurgence to happen in the next couple of games. But we have a... If we carry on the way we're going, we will have got our three of our ten points from the most unlikely of fixtures. Right on 30, 37, 38 minutes. Tricker is tired, but we have a highlight. South end with a goal kick. Only goes as far as Hosanna. Brings it forward to Robson. Robson's free in the penalty area. He makes it three. Hosanna with the assist there for hit for Robson's third goal of the season. He is now. Boreham Wood 3, South End 0, and we're not even at half time. I don't know what to. I don't know what has caused it. Is it the new formation? I've changed so much in the last couple of weeks. It is difficult now to tell what it is that has changed this, but I don't care because we are minutes from half time. And have put three past first place South End. Yes, they've they've got set their player got sent off after ten minutes. But do you know what? You can only play what's in front of you. And Crossdale now has the ball in the penalty area to Lee Yeats. Yeats tries to get his first goal for a little while. Unfortunately, he can't. I think we've given away a free kick we have. South End have a free kick with Clifford just outside the penalty area, just before half time. Ball into the centre. And Coker gets a goal back for South End. Disappointing if we lose, lose a goal, but we concede a goal from a set piece, but it was likely the only time that was going to happen based on Southampton having 10 men. Hopefully, we don't allow them back into this, but it is not even half time yet, still. And Southampton have another chance. Ball into the centre. Kurt manages to clear it. Robson now with the ball. Can we counter attack yet again? Taylor Crossdale sees Yeats. Yeats has beaten the offside trap into the centre and he puts it wide. Yeats has been disappointing. I think Yeats may be coming off in the second half. He's he's completely dropped off form when it comes to his goal scoring. So we may have may be bringing the partnership, getting the band back together with Fagan and Taylor Crossdale. Let's have a look at tired legs. Tricker is the only one that's on the red at the moment, but I'm reluctant to change the back four. Kirk is on a yellow card, and he's got the worst rating of the group bar Yeats. Do I take Yeats off now and bring on Fagan for the second half? I think I'm going to. I'm going to make a half-time substitution. We'll bring on Fagan. As I said, getting the band back together for how well we're playing in this game so far. Hopefully Fagan can break his goal-scoring drought as well. Let's get into this second half and hopefully we can finish the job off and do as well in the second half as we did in the first. And 56 minutes on the clock, almost 57 minutes. Hoddard with the goal kick. 
Hoot forward to Adebayi. Adebayi f- tries to find Fagan. Fagan tries to find Crossdale, but Mundell, Robson, Mundell, Mundell smashes it into the other top corner. He's the, he, Adebayi and I think Robson scored in the right hand top corner in the first half. Uh, Adebayi with the ball forward to Fagan. Taylor Crossdale was tackled. Mundell managed to find the ball. Robson to Mundell. Mundell smashes it into the left hand top corner this time. To make it 4-1, surely that is it now. And we cannot fall apart in this second half so badly that we can concede four goals. But if any season were going to do it, it would probably be this season. But we have another highlight. Kirk to Robinson, to Hosanna. Hosanna comes inside to Robinson, to Hosanna, to Mundell, who just scored. He couldn't find the cross, unfortunately. Hosanna managed to win the ball back, though. Whips in the stairs to Crossdale. Crossdale slots it in for his second of the game. And his 21st of the season to make it Borehamwood 5, South End 1. <laughs> Oh, the players, uh, it appears the players are right behind me. They've obviously got news of the board looking looking to sack me. And they are still willing to play for me. I'm keep, We are keeping with the diamond formation for the time being if we're going to play like this. We've allowed Yeovil to, to go to the top of the table. South End now in second. We've come up as far as ninth and are now four points off the playoffs. I was about to make some substitutions, but just before the 80th minute, we have another highlight. Mundell to Hosanna. Hosanna through to Crossdale. Can he make it hatching? Unfortunately, the ball is cleared. Hosanna with a volley cross to Robson. Now to Hosanna. Back and centre to Crossdale. Can he get his hat trick? Yes, he can. Taylor Crossdale back in the goals. Boreham Wood back in the goals. And our first win in what feels like a century. It has been so long since we've got any points at all. But to, uh, since our last win has got to be at least seven, eight, nine games at this point, bar the league, the league trophy. But we have got six today against what was top of the table, South End, and this is taking advantage of a situation to its most. South End now have a ball, the ball straight from the kickoff, and they have a highlight here. Howell to Ralph. To Crankshaw. South End looking for what is... Sh- if they do get a goal, surely going to be just a consolation. I'll make up of high- a bit of changes at the end of this. Coker there with a, with a goal back for South End. It, surely, surely that is only... With 10 minutes left to play, only a consolation goal. I don't care about the replay. Let's make some substitutions. Let's get some tired legs off. Oh, look at the state of that. Where do we start from here? Um, we'll take Robson off because we've got a direct replacement f- with Lewis. Let's take Divine off as well and bring on Hancock, Hancock for him. I'd like to trade Tricker off, but I'm reluctant. To, even though there's only 10 minutes left to play, I am so reluctant to change the back four for how leaky our defence has been. And even in this game, we've still conceded two goals, even though we've scored six. But with minutes left to play, we're now in injury time. This is a this will be a statement win. Fagan with a free kick to Adebayi, looking to make it seven. Unfortunately, he doesn't. That might be a little bit unfair on Southend, who have had a really good season so far, and we have taken advantage of them being ten men in spades. Crossdale gets a ten point oh. I have not had a ten point oh average rating for a player on FM twenty one, and what a time to do it! He had a hat trick as well. Mundell with an 8.1, Hosanna with an 8.6. He knows that he knows that there's a there's there's competition coming in for that left for that right back spot uh, over the Christmas period. So he wants to try and make it, put his stake in the squad. I said it beforehand. I said this would be a turning point in the season if we managed to get anything from this game, and we have got everything from this game. We're now only four points behind Swindon. We've repaired some of the damage from the last couple of weeks. And we've already got three points out of ten on the board. Everyone's knackered, which is going to be a problem. We have a game midweek as well. So I think we'll be having a lot of resting for the players. Very little training this week, I think. Crossdale, I get to finally praise him yet again for his superb performance in front of goal. It's been a little while since I've been able to do that. And here we are. Three points earned. Seven points needed in the next four matches. They're keeping tally of it as well. Southend were on an 11-game unbeaten away run. What a boosting performance this is. But let's look at the schedule. So, I think I will play the Tranmere and Stevenage games offline. 
We'll then face 13th place Exeter and 14th place Lake Noyant on the next episode, which will either be the continuing of a positive bit of form going into January, or it will be my final two games at Boreham Wood. Hopefully it's the former. What a roller coaster of an episode that was. And if you enjoyed it, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of the next few episodes, which are going to be key in my ongoing save, hopefully continuing with Boreham Wood. And thank you very much for watching.